The team is back together inside the Coliseum with Gary Klein and Bill Plaschke. I'm Lindsay Theory with the Los Angeles Times. USC opens the Pac-12 conference schedule with a 41 to 31 loss to Stanford. Bill, the more things change, the more they, really they stay the same. Uh, Lindsay, I got two words for this game. Boom, boom. <laughs> I mean, that's what happened Those are to you. Two fists. Oh, two fists. Okay, that's what happened to USC tonight. They came and got steamrolled by a team that was tougher than them, that was stronger than, them, that was more intense than them. It was stunning how bad USC's defense was. And again, this is the first time we've really seen the team since they played Idaho and Arkansas State. Really didn't count. And what we saw was a team flashy offensively, flimsy defensively. Gary, I think that's a little bit what we expected, perhaps going into this. We knew their offense was going to be good, mm -hmm. but did we expect USC's defense to give up these kind of points to Stanford? After those first two games, like Bill talked about, this was an untested team. Arkansas State, Idaho, throw it out the window. Great for developing your depth, for seeing your young players, but for toughening up for a game like this against Stanford team that didn't look too great in its first two games, but David Shaw had them ready. Kevin Hogan, I don't know if he played out of his mind or he finally just played up to what we've all expected, and USC just wasn't ready for it. Bill, speaking of Kevin Hogan, I, I hate to pull up your archives. Actually, I love to go through your archives. You're the only one. Yeah, yeah. Cody Kessler, a season ago, you called him a potential Heisman candidate. Was this the performance of a Heisman candidate tonight? I mean, I don't think anybody's thinking about Heisman right now, and they were trying to win a game. I thought Cody was fine. He was good. He was he's decent, but was he good enough to lift them past a bad defense? Was he good enough to overcome? He wasn't. He was not tonight. And I think moving forward, he probably needs to take more charge out there. And again, this loss is not on him at all because the defense, every time they scored, the, the defense gave him another touchdown. But you would like to maybe see him take control and maybe be able to lift them above what they were. He was unable to do that tonight. He's been un unable to do that in big games since he's been at USC. Gary, if we kind of dis dissect the defense, they obviously lost Leonard Williams. We knew that would be a big hole in practice. They don't put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. We knew the secondary would have a tough time, just younger guys trying to make up for no pressure on the quarterback. Mm -hmm. Do you think the entire team sees that now? I think the entire team has really seen that since Leonard Williams went off to the NFL. It has been a concern. They need more production from their defensive linemen. It looked like they might get a spark there when Greg Townsend had a sack and then linebacker Anthony Sorrow comes in with one and USC kind of gets a little spark there in the second half, but they couldn't sustain it. And the defensive line has not been able to get to the quarterback and that's against Arkansas State and Idaho. When you run into a guy like Hogan, next week you're going to hit Mike Bercovici, who can throw it and can also run it. It's, they've got a lot of work to do this week. Gary, so, fast question for you. So do you think the fact that they've this tough patch so early, will this make them lose faith in Sarkeesian? Was that a fine line because of what happened at the Salute to Troy? Is, this gonna, is he going to lose some of that locker room? We talked about this after his press conference a few days later. And I asked him, you know, are you going to have – problems, disciplining guys. I, I think everything is fine as long as you're winning. But once you start losing and people start pointing fingers, it doesn't get easy. And here's the other thing. Going to Arizona State, this is the first road game for Sarkeesian since that incident. That's already a ridiculously tough crowd in Tempe. I can't even imagine the signs that are going to be in that in that crowd and what's going to be chanted. You know, and you got to think if the team is being distracted by the head coach, that's not going to be a good thing. Everyone's going to be watching that. The last time, remember the last time we were in Tempe, guys? I was just Jordan going to Arcade. say, if I could ever talk, <laughs> okay. back to 2013, there was a 4 a.m. text message or 4 a.m. email about Lane Kiffin being let go after a loss in Tempe. It was one of my more memorable moments. I'm at the airport at 8 o'clock in the morning, having already filed the story, and a bunch of USC fans come in like in their pajamas for the early morning flight, and they say, hey, Plasky, they really need to fire Kiffin. I said, too late, they already have. They said, what, we just were at the game last night. So, yeah, that was a memorable moment. USC has bad, bad memories of Tempe. Gary, any chance a loss in Tempe means that somebody on the staff could be let go? Well, I, I don't think anyone's going to be let go after the fourth game of the season. Yeah, fifth game of the season, Lane Kiffin. Well, okay, but this is Sarkeesian's yeah. second season. I think it certainly is not going to bode well for anyone if they start 2-2. Two and two. Everyone thought this was a possibility, but everyone looked to that Arizona State game as the one that was going to be really difficult to win. Now Stanford's knocked them off. Now you're going on the road against a team that has confidence it can beat them with a Hail Mary or not. So I don't think it gets real easy for SC. And this team, can you agree, Gary, they cannot go 2-2, two and two, or it's disastrous yeah. around here. Well, Lindsay, you you know, you hear the feedback on yeah. Twitter, you get the email yes. from USC fans. 
What do they what say? Do you think? What do they Fire say? Justin Wilcox. I'm just repeating what people are telling me. <laughs> yeah, you know what? This is the first time I mentioned in my column for tomorrow's paper that he's under fire. I think this game puts Sark back under fire. I think it puts Pat Hayden under a little fire. And it puts Justin Wilcox clearly the targets on his back. So USC begins this season 2-1, and one, dropping their first Pac-12 game to Stanford. As we've mentioned, it doesn't get easier. They head out to Tempe next week and to take on Arizona State and Mike Bercovici, who defeated USC last season on a Hail Mary pass. With Gary Klein and Bill Plaschke, I'm Lindsay Theory for the Los Angeles Times.